what's up and what's not in the sky. My plan is to generate one of these recordings two to three times a month or more when needed. So let's get started. What's up and, well, now down. Here's a picture of the sun that I took earlier today. Notice the sunspots scattered about. Now, these spots are larger than the Earth itself. There was another series of sunspots on January 29th which generated what is called a corona mass ejection, or CME. Energy from that massive solar flare arrived at the Earth on February 2nd. Now, this was responsible for the demise of 40 new Starlink satellites. Now, one of the day spots also generated a corona mass ejection, or solar flare, and that happened a few days ago and is now just arriving at Earth. The results will be those beautiful northern lights, but they also could affect more satellite communication. Now, no effect from that will be felt or seen from our latitude here of 32 degrees north. The sun is currently on the upswing of its 11-year solar cycle, which won't peak until the year oh, about 2025. What's up in the nighttime sky? Or should I say morning sky? Now, if you are an early riser, you might have been noticing a very bright object in the eastern pre-dawn sky. No, it's not a satellite or a bird or a plane, but it is the planet Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, and it is at its most brilliance right now, shining at a magnitude of minus 4.7, which is extremely bright. Now, in magnitude terms, the lower the value, the brighter the object. For example, the brightest star in the sky is Sirius, with a magnitude of minus 1.5. Polaris, or the North Star, is nowhere near the brightest star. Its magnitude is only about plus 2. Remember, the higher the number, the dimmer the object. The uh, stars in the Big Dipper, they're about 1.5 or so. Now, the sun, on the other hand, shines at a magnitude of minus 26. Don't look directly at that. Besides Venus, very nearby is ruddy red Mars. A little bit on the dim side at the moment at a magnitude plus 1.4. Not so bright. But by early December later this year, it'll be shining brilliantly as a bright red object at minus 2. Now also is a good time to try to catch the fleeting Mercury, the fast-moving planet, the closest planet to the sun. It is now visible low in the east-southeastern sky in the morning twilight. The moon, it's waxing, means it's getting bigger. And it'll be full February 16th and 17th. And this will be known as the snow moon. Now, even though there will not be any snow here in Savannah, not, not at least with this moon. In the nighttime sky, you still have the beautiful Orion Nebula to gaze at. If you have a small telescope or even binoculars, you should be able to see it. It is high in the southern sky around 9 o'clock in the evening hours at this time of the year. My highlight astronomy target this week is found in the Big Dipper. It is Messier 82, or commonly known as the Cigar Galaxy. This is known as a starburst galaxy. It gets its name by the shape of that of a celestial cigar, perhaps even an exploding cigar. The galaxy appears edge on from our point of view and it contains about 30 billion stars and is growing and is about 11.5 million light years away, meaning it took light 11 and a half million years just to get here. So we're seeing this galaxy now as it appeared 11 and a half million years ago. M82 is being physically affected by its larger neighbor, M81, which has about 250 billion stars. That's about the same amount of stars we have in our own Milky Way galaxy. Now, M81 and M82 are about 150,000 light years from each other, and tidal forces caused by the gravity have deformed M82 a process that started about 100 million years ago and perhaps M81 moved close by to M82. That generated shock waves, and those waves uh, that encountered uh, from the passing by of the two galaxies triggered a collapse of giant clouds of dust and gas, mostly hydrogen, and that was in and around what is now known as M82. Those red nebulous areas emanating from the center of the galaxy well, in about 100 million years or so, most of the gas and dust will have been used to form new stars or simply just blown away from the galaxy. 
so the starburst then will subside. I'm making a more in-depth video about those galaxies, and that'll be forthcoming shortly. Or if you want, you can watch my last video on the what causes the Horsehead Nebula to glow. That's on my YouTube channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Or you can also catch my weather forecast and information, including my six-week weather outlook every day on my uh, weather and nature page. That's savannapat.name. And more astronomy on my Heavenly Backyard Astronomy page, heavenlybackyardastro.com. Also, Facebook, uh, you can pick me up there as well. Well, spring is not too far away. My daffodils are beginning to bloom, and for me, that means it's time to plant potatoes. Bye.